We will have two minutes for an opening statement from Senator Avella to share the top three policy priorities, and then we will start with questions. So you have now two minutes. Well, first of all, I want to thank all the groups for uh, hosting this forum tonight. Um, and especially, I would like to highlight the Mid Quan Center, because actually, um, one of my employees who's now counsel to the Social Services Committee, Dawa Zhang, actually works for Min Kwan, and I was very happy to steal her away from Min Kwan. But I gotta tell you, she's done a, a great job. But I appreciate all the work that Min Kwan has done and all the organizations that are here tonight. Um, I have represented this, uh, the 11th Senatorial District now for three and a half years in the Senate. A lot of my Senate district I represented in the Council for eight years. I look forward to representing you again. The top three issues are very easy to uh, sort of rattle off. Campaign finance. We absolutely have to take big money out of the elections because the big donors control the system, not you. And that has to change. We absolutely have to pass the women's equality agenda. That absolutely has to be done. We have to pass the DREAM Act, which I'm a co-sponsor of, as well as the Women's Equality Act. Those three things are primary for every Democratic elected state senator. We need to do that this session. But unfortunately, even if we have a Democratic majority, not every Democratic senator in the state of New York supports those issues. So even though we, we have an election in the uh, 11th Senatorial District, we have to make sure that Democratic senators who support those issues are elected in districts throughout the entire state. With that, I'd be happy to, to move on to the question. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so then we'll go into the questions by the panel that um, is here before you. The first question comes from James Hong, uh, Ming Kwan staff. Um, yes, Ming Kwan staff on the first okay. question, thank you. Uh, Mr. Avella, uh, it sounds like you do support this, but um, the, our question is, uh, one way to lessen the influence of corporate money in politics is to boost the value of small individual campaign contributions through public financing, such as a matching system. New York City already uses such a system for its city elections, but New York State does not. Do you support comprehensive campaign finance reform with public financing of elections at its core? If not, why? And since you already sound like you do, I would ask you, I would add on, um, if you would want it different uh, from the city uh, system in any way, what what would be uh, you know any tweaks? That's uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, you know, we added that sort of caveat to the question. First of all, I've been a sponsor of campaign finance reform going back to my first days in the city council. In fact, I support the matching fund program. I want it to go further. I want total matching funds of campaigns. Period. Until we take out special interests and the big donors, we're losing control of our own democracy. I introduced a bill in the city council. I've introduced a bill in the Senate when I first got there for total public financing of elections. It's about time that the people recaptured democracy in this country. It is a disgrace that the Supreme Court came down with a decision that corporations can now donate to elections. That means that the big corporations very often support candidates who are against the things that are of interest to us. That absolutely has to change. That has to be the number one issue for the legislature coming back in January. The governor wants to do it. I've always wanted to do it, five seconds later. And if we elect enough Democrats. Time is up. Thank you so we much. Will do it. Time is up. Thank you. Okay, so the second question comes from uh, Chaya CDC. Hello. Um, my name is Kelly Lunge. I'm a member and intern of Chaya CDC. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization, based, a community based organization based in Jackson Heights, means that works with New Yorkers of South Asian origin 
and to advocate for and build economically stable, sustainable, and thriving communities. As a tenant, I am really worried for next year in 2015, when New York State rent and eviction protection laws are up for, up for expiration, um, that they will not be renewed or strengthened enough to protect the community that I belong to. For years, the law that should protect the affordability and sustainability of housing in New York City have been decided in Albany by stakeholders that have very little connection to New York City communities. And as a result, we have been rapidly losing an important source of affordable housing, which really affects our communities. In 2011, um, though we did not gain all the changes we sought, actions were taken to strengthen the rent laws after a long time. We must continue to demand for strengthened rent and eviction protection laws that will sustain an important source of affordable housing. Um, so my question is, um, do you support renewing and strengthening these laws? And if so, what changes would you make to better protect tenants? Would you withhold your vote on the budget unless stronger rent laws were part of the budget deal in order to avoid the end of session crisis as they're about to expire? Um, well, you really have two parts to that question. First of all, um, one of the first things that I did when I graduated college with a science major was form a tenants association when I still lived at home. I have always been 100% on tenants' rights. I support the extension of the rent control measures and protections. I've also advocated for the end of vacancy decontrol because I think that hurts tenants dramatically. Now, so you have my support when it comes to tenant protections. That's, that's a given. Would I vote against the budget to, uh, unless we get the tenant protection? One, I think we will get the tenant protection. I don't think we have to worry about that. It's how far we can go, and especially in terms of eliminating vacancy fee control. And what that is for the members of the audience who may not understand what that is, is when a rent in a certain in an apartment reaches a certain level, and I think the level is two thousand a month now, it becomes decontrolled, and the landlord can cha charge whatever they want. Now, years ago, that might have been a high limit. That is not a high limit anymore. I see. I have five seconds left. It's very hard to vote against. Time is up. I can't answer that. Time is up. If I get a chance later on, to sum up, I'll answer that. Okay, great. That sounds good. Okay. Third question comes from New Immigrant Community Empowerment. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Jesús Moreno. Yo soy un votante y un residente de aquí de Foxy. He estado en este país por 20 años. Soy un líder de NICE, una organización en Queen que trabaja para avanzar los derechos laborales de los trabajadores inmigrantes. Algo que me preocupa a mí y a otros inmigrantes y trabajadores de bajo salario es la manera en que el Estado permite que las agencias de empleo nos fraude. Somos muy trabajadores y muchos de nosotros usamos las agencias de empleo para contratar trabajo. Sin embargo, las leyes actuales del Estado de Nueva York les da a las agencias de empleo el poder sobre los trabajadores para que les permiten, para que les permiten y cobren solamente a los trabajadores anuales, manuales. Perdón. antes de colocar los impuestos de trabajo. Las agencias abusan de ese poder cobrando sin proporcionar los servicios de forma rutinaria, exigiendo precios exorbitantes por la colocación de los trabajos y mandando a los trabajadores a trabajos que pagan menos del salario mínimo. Las leyes actuales de Nueva York que se han actualizado desde 1970 se podrían fortalecer con el proyecto de la ley S7742, el Justice for Job Seeker Bill, patrocinada por la senadora Sabina. O sea, por la senadora Sabina. Mi pregunta es, ¿qué va a hacer para proteger a los solicitantes de empleo y eliminar la práctica predatoria de las agencias de empleo? Now interpret for him. My name is Jesús Morelos, and I'm a voter and a 20-year Flushing resident. One of the issues of concern to me and other immigrants and low-wage workers is the way that a state allows employment agencies to defraud us. We are hardworking and many of us use employment agencies to find work. 
yet current New York State laws give employment agencies power over low wage workers by allowing them charge only manual workers before placing them into jobs. Um, New York's current employment agency laws, which have not been updated since 1970, will be strengthened through Bill S. 7742, the Justice for Job Seekers Bill, sponsored by, by Senator Savino. My question is, what will you do to protect job seekers and eliminate predatory practices by agencies? Well, even going back to my days in the city council and now in the Senate, whenever these issues have been brought to my attention, and I, somebody going to translate something here? I'll just say what he is. That's fine. That's fine. You understand? Yeah. yeah. And the audience has signals. Thank you so much. And everyone else should have to. Whenever these issues have been brought to my attention, I have aggressively asked whether it's the Attorney General or the State Department of Labor to investigate them. In fact, I actually had a press conference going back to my days in the city council at one of those real estate firms in Jackson Heights, even though I didn't represent that area. This is a very serious issue when workers are taken advantage of. Offhand, I don't know the bill specifically. If I'm not a co-sponsor of that bill, that was mentioned, I will be as of this moment. you got to understand there are 8,000 8, bills in the Senate, and it's hard to be in track of every single one. But I'm committed to making sure that workers are protected, that workers get the best benefits, that we increase the minimum wage, and that no worker ever works in an unsafe environment. And what I would offer is if you have specific situations where that is occurring, my staff is here. I want you to get my number. Time is I want up. you to call my office. I'm Time is up. This. Thank you so I much. I want you to call my office, and we will sit down. Time is up. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Um, so, okay, everybody. Um, so we have finished three questions. We're going on to the fourth question. Um, and I know that a couple of you have joined us recently. So I just wanted to remind everybody, please turn off your phones um, so that we don't hear it and it doesn't interrupt our, um, our candidate form here. And I'm really happy to um, say that our moderator has arrived and so I would like to introduce Rochelle Boone who will do a much better job than me in moderating a Queens reporter for New York One. We're glad to have her back as a moderator. Please welcome her. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry I'm late everyone. Mr. Bella, can you do something about the traffic in Flushing? I got caught in the traffic the same way. I only represent him. <laughs> Good evening. Are you guys being informed tonight? Yes. Hearing some good information? All right. Well, we will go on now to the next question, which is from uh, the group Immigrant Rights. OCA New York. Sorry. Excuse me. Jerry Chang. Good evening. Um, my name is Jerry Chang. I'm the board member and the former president of OCA New York chapter. OCA is a, a national membership drive driven organization um, dedicated to advancing uh, social, political, and uh, uh, economic well-being for Asian Pacific Americans. One of its primary object is to promote um, uh, active participation of APA Asian Pacific American in both civic and uh, national matters, and the Canada form is one of them. Here I have uh, uh, just a simple question. Um, Senator, uh, uh, Senator, do you support the New York State Dream Act uh, that will open state funding to all New York youth and they also raise uh, uh, private funds for uh, college scholarship. If you do, yes. uh, what will you do to, <laughs> uh, beside, other than you just uh, voting for it, uh, to make sure that, uh, make sure it's passage? Well, I can tell you not only did I vote for this session, 
but I am a co-sponsor of every single version of the Dream Bill that currently exists, the Dream Act that currently exists. You know, Queens is the most diverse county in the country. At some point, we were all in the And it's the value of this country that we take the best of every culture, every religion, every ethnic background, and meld it into the United States of America. And we have to make sure that every student has access to the best education possible. The problem is we have some Republicans and we have some Democrats in the Senate who will not vote for the Dream Act. And that goes back to what I said in my opening statement. Those people have to be replaced. You don't have to worry about me because I've supported this since the very beginning. But we have to change some of the Republicans. We have to have some more Democratic senators in those districts. But some of the Democratic senators are up there will not vote for the DREAM Act. We had a vote. This session, the Independent Democratic Conference vote brought the, Demo the DREAM Act to the floor. It lost because Democratic senators did not vote for it. OK, Mr. Arbella, thank you. Time's up. Our next question is on the minimum wage. It comes from La Fuente, Donald McCaffrey, you the member leader. Good evening. Actually, I'm sorry. Uh, Donald, unfortunately, couldn't attend today. Uh, my name is Andre Mozik. Turn I'm those signs around so I can see. But I'm a communications assistant with La Fuente. We're a nonprofit um, civic participation organization that works uh, within, the, within the five boroughs and on Long Island to bring together organized labor movements um, and their neighbors to develop programs that promote civic participation and education in immigrant communities and communities of new Americans. Um, and our question regarding uh, labor rights and the minimum wage senator um, so that cities across the U.S. Uh, right now are fighting income inequality by setting a minimum wage above the state minimum wage. Uh, Seattle, Washington, for example, just made history by uh, raising their minimum wage to $15 an hour. Um, however, in the state of New York, cities are not allowed to set their own minimum wage. Uh, we believe that this should be changed to allow cities and towns to set a higher minimum wage that better matches um, their local economy and the cost of living. Um, so if elected, how will you use your office to help raise the minimum wage in cities and towns across the state? Well, first of all, I am a co-sponsor of the minimum wage bills, and I am the author of the bill to allow New York City to set its own minimum wage. That is actually my bill. Um, I think it's crucial that the minimum wage be increased because, it, especially in New York City, because it's become so expensive to live here. Retirees can't afford to live here anymore, much less the workers who are making less than what we consider a living wage. And the other thing you mentioned about the disparity, and I'm just going to add a little something about that. There is a huge issue between the, the rich working families and the poor in this country, and that has to be addressed. I've been carrying the millionaire's tax bill in Albany since I got there. The millionaires of this state should pay more for the services for the middle class, the working families, and the poor. And until that is done, we are going to Thank you. Would you kindly turn your sign around so I make sure I have the next and correct speaker? Thank you. Next up is Brian Chen from the Chinese American Planning Council. Good evening. My name is Brian Chen, as she mentioned, from the Chinese American Planning Council. I'm the director of youth services. Uh, we're a multi-social service agency with offices in Chinatown, Manhattan, in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, as well as Flushing, Queens. Our range of services includes early childhood through senior citizens programs, and also includes um, services for families with special needs. With that said, Individuals with developmental disabilities, such as autism, mental retardation, and Down syndrome are grossly underserved within our community. Despite their great potential to be active, contributing members of our local community. 
Senator Avella, please talk to us about your vision for people with developmental disabilities, specifically those that reside within our community and the districts that you serve. Yeah, this is, you know, I appreciate you asking this question, and this is a very tough issue to deal with. Because everybody says we need to do something with these individuals, and we need to take them out of the big facilities and put them into smaller group homes. But at the same time, every time a small group home is proposed, nobody wants it in their own neighborhood. We have to have a greater collaboration between the state agencies and the community to find locations for where we can establish these smaller group homes so these individuals can be given the proper education and the proper supervision. So some of them who can function in society or those that absolutely need 24-hour supervision. The state, unfortunately, and I have fought against this, for a number of these organizations, nonprofit organizations that uh, actually operate in my Senate district has cut the funding for these groups to the extent that some of them are going to go bankrupt. And that's absolutely a disgrace because when that happens, where are these individuals going to go? I've actually met with two commissioners of the state agencies for a number of uh, nonprofits in this, uh, this area to say that the funding has to be restored. I'm now chairman of the Social Services Committee, and this is the top priority for me, and I see my time. Thank you so much. Those are all the questions we have for you tonight. I'm sorry I didn't get to spend the entire time with you, but we're glad that you came and answered questions that you guys really wanted information about, correct? That's a yes, right? <laughs> You're supposed to answer what she said. <laughs> That's okay. Don't be shy. I don't bite. Oh, I do bite? <laughs> okay, I believe that is all the time we have for you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, Mr. Lou will be joining us. If there's anybody who had a question that wanted to ask, and unfortunately there wasn't time, my staff is going to be here. Give them the question. You can get a person on this.